Now, let's say that on this particular day, you have not finished, but you've got to get back to the master for whatever reason. You need to build a new copy of the master. You need to do something to it. Now, we can just switch back and forth. If I look at my files here, I've got two files right now. I'm sitting on the branch. If I do git branch, I'm over here on the branch. Now I can say check out the master. And I've switched branches, and now if I look at my files, you'll see that branch D text has just disappeared because it's not on the master. I do whatever it is I want to do. If I look at the README, you'll notice it has the original text. It doesn't have anything about the branch. Later, for whatever reason, I need to go back to the branch. And at this point, I don't remember what the name of that branch is, but I can do git branch and I can see it. And my branch D text is back. And the changes to README are back. Now, as a practical thing in this class, um, you know, you check out stuff from uh, GitHub that has the class notes, and you want to make changes for your homework, the way I would do it is I would create a branch, put my changes on that branch, and then when I need to save those changes, I'd commit everything, and then I'd switch back to the master. And I could then pull out new changes in the master, which is the lecture notes for that day with a git pull, and then I could go back to my branch and see things. And later I would do another branch for another homework. But I just stick all the homeworks out on branches and keep, you know, moving forward with the stuff on master is the stuff for the class and the stuff on the branches is my different pieces of homework. And at the end, you've got a complete copy of the lecture notes and the stuff in class. And you've got all of your stuff out on branches that you can refer to later and in the future. So... Git log will show you, okay, about your branch and what's there. You can switch back and forth between branches with checkout. You can create more than one branch. Normally, you'll see that lots of projects have dozens of branches. Um, I'm hesitant sometimes to make branches off of branches, but you can do it. If you make branches off of branches, you really do need to merge those back in, and we're going to get into how you merge things together here in a little bit. But those branches off of branches, you need to merge into your branches before you merge your branches into your mainline stuff, or you will have unexpected results. That would be my general rule that I would apply. We can have untracked files. Let's just create one. We're on what the branch here? Yes. Uh, let's just create an untracked file, too. Okay, so if I do git status, you'll see that untracked is not tracked. And now if I check out a branch, untracked is still there. I can go back to the branch. Um, Untracked is still there. So untracked files don't change because they're not being tracked by Git. And you can have things like that. If you make changes and you need to get back to a main thing in your stuff, the thing you want to search for is a thing called Git Stash. And it will give you a way to save tracked files that are modified and get back to them later. And I do that once in a while. Now, whenever you have untracked files, you notice it gives you some hints if you do git status that you can do a git add or you can do a git commit minus a and add those files if you want to have them as a part of your repository. So sometimes you don't want to have them. Sometimes you want files that just aren't relevant. You're writing something, it produced some output, you've got a temporary file. 
maybe what you want to do when you're cleaning up your repository is you want to delete those files. Maybe you just want to leave them there, but you don't want to track them because they're not relevant to the project you're working on. Or maybe you're like me and you downloaded a file and you copied it over there because you needed some documentation on something. And at the end of it, you're going, hmm, that shouldn't go in the repository. That's not part of it. I did the thing that I needed to do out of it. It's just an untracked file. I think I mentioned git stash. Um, now, all of this stuff with untracked files and git is all still local to your system. You can build repositories that are not local to your system and have them synced up very easily. The biggest site is GitHub, and it has millions of open source projects and millions of other non-open source projects on it. I actually prefer GitLab because it also has a thing called continuous integration built right into it, which is very useful. But GitHub, GitLab, and you can also, if you take the time, run your own private Git repository. Uh, there is some level of nuisance in doing that, but it can be done. I do that. And if you don't want to take the time, but you do want to run a private repository and not pay other people for it, then you can subscribe to GitLab and get a copy of their code and run it, which has all the nice user interface stuff set up for you. You don't have to have that. You can just run Git as a server behind SSH and run a private repository. So there are many different ways to do this, but we're going to walk through using GitHub to create a repository. And you'll need an account on GitHub. If you don't already have one, go create one. And then go to your account. This happens to be an account, University of Wyoming Education. And you see that green button that says new? Click that green button to create a new repository. When you do, you'll get a screen that looks like this. You need to fill in the repository name right there. A description, whether it's public or private. GitHub just made it so that you can have private repositories without paying for an account. So you can use a free account to do this. And I would leave off the initialize with README for our homework or for stuff like that. You may want to do that later and create the repository. Each repository has to have a unique name. If you don't have a unique name, you'll get a little red X up here. But put in a unique name there and you get a repository. And then you get some page that looks like this if you have not told it to create a readme file. You have a choice between HTTPS or SSH. I use SSH for various security reasons instead of HTTPS. I think the default is still HTTPS. But if you use SSH, it's more complicated to set up. Yours is going to show this. And the difference will be right here in this stuff where it says GitHub and how it has this URL over here that ends in git. Um, the more convenient is HTTPS. I will admit that immediately. But in any case, the piece of stuff we are interested in is this one down here, the second block. And it says we're going to do this git remote add origin and git push origin master. And the way this works is We've created some stuff on our local system that has a Git repository. We'd now like to attach that to an upline and send all of our changes to our wonderful files, README, and our branch dtext, and send those on up to GitHub so that they can be shared with the world or not shared with the world. But we're going to push them all up. So let's remote add, remote add this origin and uh, push this up.